Welcome to the Creative Connections Podcast, connecting creatives and geeks all over the planet, one tiny podcast at a time, once a week. We are grateful to be sponsored by several software tools sold in our tech shop at creativeconnections.tech. Check it out today and see what new tools we have for your business or creativity. And now, here is your hostess of Creative Connections. Putting hashtag art and apps on the map. Stacy Brayuga. How are you doing? <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, uh, welcome to Thursday afternoon um, and Creative Connections. I am Stacy Brayuka, your hostess that's working on putting art and apps on the map. And today's guest, I am so excited to have my Blab sister. Is Today's guest is my ama an amazing systems guru, Marissa Stone. She could be my Texas twin in so many ways because we both love being creative and we both love cutting edge tech stuff. Um, we can both trace our techie roots back to DOS. And maybe then, so for me, then some, I know. And, you know, we can both chase back to DOS. And we both love organizing information into processes, like putting things together. So I, you guys, I can't, I love watching her group posts in her group, the Systems Lounge, because there's so many little golden nuggets in there of goodness. Like, I'll, I'll be at dinner and I'll see a post and it's like, Oh my God, I didn't know that was happening. It's like a geek girl gold mine. You have a geek girl gold mine. <laughs> she, she also shares my passion for empowering women, um, which we'll hopefully be able to hear about. Um, so in the words of the Beatles, I'm going to say, let me introduce you to, oh wait, 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 wrong and true. <laughs> How are you today, Miss Goldmine Fantastic? I am fabulous. Thank you so much for having me on this show. I really, really appreciate it. I am so excited to be here. So excited to spend a little bit of time chatting with you. And, um, and you know, I basically have been called the powerhouse systems hacker because I basically take a look at what people are using and what tools they're trying to use to accomplish their goals. And I determine whether or not those tools are the right tools to A, accomplish the goal and to B, integrate nicely into everything else that they're doing. And then, of course, we also look at budgetary requirements and we look at, you know, time allotted and all of those sorts of things. So, you know, I love creating online courses, eBooks, you know, I do seminars and webinars all the time. I'm, I, I have my own mastermind that I run once a week that's about a three hour long, you know, group. Um, and, and my goal with all of these different formats, uh, you know, to get education or information to you is that you get answers, not fluff. So I think that's one of the areas that you and I really connect well mm -hmm. within because you and I met because of my Canva challenge, I believe. Yes, it was. was that the first time that, yeah, that's what I thought. And, and the, so I had looked at Canva prior to that and it was like, eh, it's okay. Now I'm like, oh, Canva evan Canvangelist, you know, last week I was talking about, I'd looked at Trello before that. And then right. I finally latched onto Trello earlier this year and I'm a Trello evangelist. Now I'm a, I, and, but if for, oh yeah, you have Canva, you gotta have. Yes. Um, and we and just so, heard a nugget about Canva. Yeah, I know. I know. Animation. Anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's, you know, I think that you and I share a lot, um, in common with the idea that we are really interested in providing people with solutions to problems. Uh -huh. So, and that requires, you know, I'm doing a business system summit, which we'll talk about later, but in my mind, a business system is either a piece of technology or a process that you use to accomplish your goal the exact same way every single time. Mm -hmm. We put these systems in place in order to run our businesses, right? Otherwise, we're putting this fire out over here and this fire out over here, and we're we're reactively running our businesses versus the the proactive role of being the CEO of our company. And so And you get exhausted so when you do, do that. Like if you're yeah. running around putting out fires all the time, oh my God. Yeah. And, and, and so you go into this whole business mindset 
thinking, I'm going to work for myself. I'm going to be able to wear my BJs. I'm going to not have to leave the house all the time. And I'm going to be able to do what I love. And you have these dreams and you're all excited. And then if you're, if you don't do some prep work, if you don't build a foundation, you are running around putting out fires and then you go in bed every night going, Oh, I'm yeah. just so exhausted. I really don't know if I want to do this. I'm, I, I, uh, it's not what I wanted to, it's not my love. I don't even love what I loved. Well, and here's another thing that, that running around being reactive in your company does. It totally, completely destroys your productivity. You cannot get anything done because you're too busy putting out fires all day long. You can't even, so, you can't even like, get your email read right all those dreams and aspirations and where you wanted to be by the end of the year and your vision board and all those sort of things don't happen because you're too busy running around with your fire hose putting out fires you and can't so, even create your vision board what are you talking about <laughs> exactly yeah so so basically i come in and and after one session with me you will have your you know your clarity position squarely above your ears, you will have your to-do list complete, all the tech savviness that you can muster, and you will be building that passion-filled life you have been trying to build for quite some time. And you can go to my website and check out the, um, the testimonials, but I've had, I've had women come into my office and say, um, the minute I come in here, my shoulders just relax. <laughs> It's like because someone's sending me the tech angel. And you're going to get me to a place where I can start accomplishing my goals. And that's what it's all about. right? And watching somebody, watching when somebody goes from place of being frustrated. And, and I can say this from my years of, you know, I mean, I may, I'm a, I'm a, I'm embryonic in the business world. Even though I've kind of done some business things in the last five years, I'm still in the entrepreneurial world, I'm very, I'm, I'm like a newborn baby still. Um, right. Maybe not, but you know, whatever. I might, I might have, I might be teething, yeah. I think. Give yourself um, some credit. Yeah. I think, I think maybe I'm teething or whatever. You know, maybe I'm getting ready to walk. I don't know. Um, but in the, in the watching people grow and get to goals world, I've been there for 20 years. Yeah. And, so I can, I know what it feels like to sit there and you work with if somebody comes in just, you know, and you, you first, you know, you get to the calm down mm -hmm. and then you, you listen to, you know, tell me what your story is. They, they get that story out and then you, you mull it around and do put the things in place and okay, then we need to look at this, this, and this first. Then we'll, yep. you know, and and then but these are the tools, yep. and the tools are and the the do. tech They'll tools. Sit down and we just come up with a, you know, several several of my clients will take pages upon pages of notes, right? To know exactly what they need to do and in what order. And so, in watching them do that, I created a roadmap, and this roadmap is going to be the basis of the business system summit that we're going to talk about a little bit later because there are so many things that you need to get into place in order to be able to run your business proactively and mm -hmm. be working on your business and not in your business. Right. And, you know, one of the things that, um, that I talk a lot with my clients about is if you, if you're in, in the corporate world, or even if you're in the academic world, right, mm -hmm. all these systems are in place for you, right? There is, you know, there's an office that you go into with mm -hmm. the secretary who's going to handle everything, all the communications that go out, all the communications. They have a you've handbook. Got a person, you've got a web person. You've got all of these people on your team. When you step out into the entrepreneurship world, there's one person. Mm -hmm. Namely, you. <laughs> me, myself, and, and I, yeah. Me, myself, and I, right. And until you get to the place where maybe you are hiring a VA or you're bringing in an assistant or you're working and doing some sort of bartering system with somebody else mm -hmm. and collaborat collaborating with somebody else to accomplish a goal, it's really on you. So when you start looking at those big picture goals, and that's what I look at with people, what are you trying to accomplish, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it's retreats and summits. That's my big 2017 this year is I really want to start reaching more people. And so what is it I'm trying to accomplish and what are the steps I need to take in order to get there? And that's where my passion is and that's where my expertise lies.
Yeah, and I think, um, you know, as someone who's recently gone through that kind of journey from, you know, literally, literally from the academic world two years ago, um, it was two years ago that I was getting really stressed. I was getting physically ill. Two years ago this summer, I had a double outer and double inner ear infection. Yikes. That caused headaches and dizziness. I literally couldn't walk across. I couldn't walk from where you're sitting to where that doorway was at, yeah. by myself. Yeah. Um, so by September, I ended up having to leave my comfortable, you know, and it was the last vestiges of a traditional job mm-hmm. uh, because I was already working a couple part time contract things and I was working my way. I knew, I knew that this was going to be where I wanted to be in the journey, right. but it, you know, so I was working my way there and, you know, that came up so quick. Then it was like, thankfully I had a little bit of a cushion of money, but the whole, okay, I knew I wanted to be sitting here doing this work, but I had no idea what I wanted to do yeah or what were what are my skills what is what does Stacy really have to give to the world you know yeah. and so it's taken a year's worth of a journey a little over a year to really do a lot of soul searching and thinking about and like what, it, what not only what do I have to bring to the world but which part of me do I really want to focus on because I want to do the things I enjoy which part's going to get me up at three in the morning going oh my gosh I got to go write this now and I'll sleep late later, you know, <laughs> because I can. And here's a secret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're going to tell me this now? Yeah. After the year and a half? <laughs> Thank here's you. <laughs> You're going to dive deep into where you're at today and what you think you want to offer today. And then just as you've done all your life, you're going to evolve. Mm-hmm. Just like every other entrepreneur out here evolves. So. Yes. One of the things that I work on with my clients is, you know, okay, we're starting at goal one, but don't be surprised if goal one turns into goal 10 in the year's time that we're going to be working together. Mm -hmm. Because what you're going to find about you is as you start diving in to this new prospect that you're getting ready, this new goal, this new um, business that you're getting ready to embark upon, you're going to find other talents that you weren't really You didn't really Mm -hmm. know those, like you knew they were there, but you didn't really know how much you loved them. You know, I mean, even today, I'm still evolving. I've got multiple higher level degrees and I'm still evolving. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, you don't stop and and you don't want to, right? Well, like we've both collected degrees and then now we're collecting business, uh, not not just, not. I don't want to say products. You may know the right word. We're collecting business things to give the well, world. And, and I'm and I'm and I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm really an infopreneur. I am somebody that shares information. Knowledge transfer mm-hmm. to me is huge. If I've got knowledge you can use and I can give that to you, that makes mm-hmm. my day. Like this is something I love to do. And you I are know, my twin. You I are my twin. <laughs> I know this is gonna help you to accomplish your goals. So I, I'm, I'm working with this coach right now, and we're really diving deep into my dream and where I want to be in the next few years, you know. Um, and one of the things that's kind of been an aha moment for me is that seminars, summits, retreats, shows, all of these ways in which, you know, online courses, ebooks, all of these ways in which I can provide knowledge and information to somebody that needs it so they can pick up that ball and run with it and get uh-huh. the job that they're trying to do done. That's who I am. That's who I've been as far back as I can remember. So it's changing the model of my own business. I'll, I'll no longer be the person that, that you come in and I, and I put this stuff together for you. Instead, I'm the person who educates you on how uh-huh. to do it yourself so that you have a, an understanding of it. So even if you decide later on you're going to hire a VA or an assistant or a techie person or whomever else you decide you're going to hire, you now know what you're trying to tell them to do because now you've got an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. Which really brings up a good, a good point, I think, because I think a lot of people may dive deep into the I'm going to hire someone right. too quick. Because yeah. you, there's there's something to that doing being in the trenches. There's something to the 
being in the trenches in the regular world, because if you haven't worked the front line of something, you're not necessarily going to know how to manage it well. You're not right. going to know how to train people because of that. You're not going to know the bigger picture because of that. Right. There's, And I think in the entrepreneur world, it's even more, um, it's definitely more challenging because what you're trying to do is impart what's inside you. And you need to take what's inside you and turn it into the, um, uh, well, from the business world, the SOPs of, right. of you. So right. what, are the, what are the standard operating procedures of Stacy? Because you're yeah. not going to have a VA that can do it unless you have lined it out. Yep. yep. And that's and ideally, hard to do because you usually intrinsically can just do. Right. You know? Right. And ideally, that's, that's where a productivity point. tool would come in, right? Mm -hmm. Asana or Trello or something of that sort. If you're pulling somebody in to do some of these things for you, you've already set up, you know, a list or a board or something right. for them to be able to turn to that maybe has videos of how you want things done or maybe, you know, um, you know, some sort of documentation of, you know, those SOPs and how exactly you want things done. And that's why your systems are so important. That's why it is. It is so important to get these together and figure this piece out so that when you are at that point where you know you need ten team members, you can pull them in with no problem and it's right. a very smooth transition to let somebody take over your email marketing or to let somebody take over your social media manage, you know, marketing or management or community or whatever the case may be, right? Well, but because what you're what you're talking about is that the system, the um you know, like you say, if you're in academia, you've got uh, somebody at that desk that right. knows what's going on. You've got a, a student handbook. You get syllabi yeah. from your teachers. Yeah. Instead, when you're out on your own, and even if you're in the corporate world, you've got right. training that you go to. You've got operating procedures you're given. You've got all of that. And you have to create those things as the foundation to build this house. And I, right. I'm glad you brought up the tools because they're they're just tools. If you yeah. can use whatever whichever system works for you, but you brought up some interesting tools. Should we let them in on that secret? <laughs> There's something brewing under here about <laughs> which tools are working. We can't tell you any more than that because we'd have to shoot you. You're gonna love it. <laughs> done it. That's all I'll say. Yep. <laughs> it is gonna be so much fun though. We might have to call it the twin challenge now. Ooh. Or a, a twin off. Yeah. We'll, we'll come, we'll come you guys put in the chat what you think we should call basically a face off. That's all I can tell you. It's a face off between the us two, you know, us two, two techie twinny girls about, <laughs> you know, what works. And I do see in the chat Miss Lindsay Badger, another amazing organizer. She was on the show a couple weeks ago and we did May the 4th be Trelloed. Speaking of Trello, ha, ha. she does event planning. Nice. Um, nice. And we planned, we, and we gave away a, um, we gave away the, the template for the plan of how to plan a birthday party about May the 4th. And we Very used, nice. but if she had not used this and created her system, it was all based on a system. Yeah. That she uses to plan those events. That's how it works mm -hmm. every single time. And so that's, in my mind, that's what a business system is. And that's why, you know, I, I get this from my clients all the time, right? Is, you know, how do I, you and I were just talking about setting up your email list, right? Oh, how yeah. Do I do, how do I accomplish this goal? What are the steps I need to take to accomplish this goal? Mm -hmm. And the business system summit is going to discuss all the different areas of what you need to make sure you're covering, productivity being one of them, you know, your communication strategy being one of them, your social media strategy, because your communication strategy may be very different than your social media strategy. Mm. Remember, we were talking about how those two audiences oftentimes are different, right? And so you're going to be relating to those audiences very differently based on who is in that group. So right? you can't just say, hey, come over to my house to everybody. Well, because they may not, but, you could, but they may not know you or show up. <laughs> They'd be going, I'm not coming to your house. I don't know who, in the, uh, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you live. I don't know what's going on with you. Yeah. Or your friends so, may be going, yeah, I'll come over, but don't sell me nothing. Right. Or, or <laughs> I'm not interested in working. I'm going to the pool. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there. I'll bring the ice and the drinks. 
but I'm going to be by the pool. That's right. <laughs> Not in front of the computer. So, yeah. So, so you know, one of the things that I'm doing with that summit is, is this roadmap is going to actually walk you through all the pieces. And then you'll have several options with regard to, you know, you'll have the free summit and then you'll have the all access pass summit, which will include, you know, yeah, nice. it's going to be pretty cool, which will include the full on PDF roadmap and, and how exactly to walk yourself through setting up your business from the ground up. Have you told anybody about the summit yet? Um, I've told the speakers. I'm trying to get all my speakers together because I've been crazy busy traveling. So is this a debut of like caring this about this? <laughs> this you heard it here um, first. People, my speakers know, you know, um, but yeah, so all of the interviews will take place over the summer. The And I'm looking at dates for fall for when the summit will actually go live to attendees. So yeah. Still lots to do, but I'm super excited about it. Now, so in order to put that together, you had to put to, you have a system for everything and you had to put your, you're walking through that system right now. Yeah, this is my system. Oh, check that <laughs> chunk of paper out. Now, see, mine would be 16 Trello the boards. It's, the only reason it's paper is because I've been flying a lot and, and you have to, you know, Rather than pull the computer out on the plane, you just take the documents and make notes. You bring that. up yeah, more excellent points is you must have paper to back up your, or for your, for your times when like the electricity goes out. Like last <laughs> week, our like, and in the Midwest, our electricity goes out for all sorts of fun stuff. I'm sure it does down South too. Well, um, I'm, I'm actually a paperless person as much as I possibly can be. Mm -hmm. I use Evernote religiously. Oh, love Evernote. Everything that I need. So between Asana and Evernote, my productivity is tight. And so, mm -hmm. and it's available on every device. So even if my power goes out, I've got my, my iPad or my phone and I've got lip, lipstick chargers in every drawer that are already charged. There is no way Marisa is going to be without power. Um, for, do you for have a device? Because uh, do you have a backup hotspot for your internet? I don't think we have a backup hotspot, but if I, <gasps> if, you know, a lot of this type of stuff you can just access from your device right. anyway because you're on the cellular network. So yeah, but if the cell network is down or you don't have signal, yeah, then you're then, then you're you out went, of luck. Yeah. Luckily, that doesn't happen here very often. Knock on wood. Just like just a day. nugget for those of you who are watching. Backup hotspot means, you know, a little hotspot you can use and um, get a hold of me and I will send you a link to Freedom Pop where you there can, you all you do is buy the device like 30 bucks and mm -hmm. you get f so much free a month mm -hmm. of um, internet on it. You can, you can pay them $4 a month to roll over that unused okay. stuff, but it's handy when you get somewhere and it's like, there's no internet at this restaurant, but this is where we're working and whatever. I don't plan meetings at places that don't have Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. No, but, I don't either. You should, you should definitely send us that link. I can't see the chat pod, so I don't know if people are talking. Um, I can I see know. it over on my eCam screen. Okay. And, yeah, um, I, I and actually see I see that Lindsay's there and usually Lindsay's pretty good about helping, um, pop up ideas. I don't have the link to be able to pop to her right now. I will put it in. I'll actually put it in the show notes, which reminds right. me, those of you who might be listening, since this turns into a podcast, please go over to creativeconnections.com. It's C-R-E-A-T-I-V connections.com and check out episode number five with Marissa Stone of the Systems Lounge. Um, it will be on the blog and it will be on YouTube. So you can watch it on YouTube or you can watch it on the website. You can watch it on Facebook, the replay on Facebook live. And then it syndicate that I have a, I have a system set up. It's an automated system where it strips the audio and then takes it out into the audio uh, podcast world. Um, so it'll, you know, if you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher or any of the wonderful podcast places, come over and see me, drop me a note um, and, and, Drop us, you know, some information. Say hi to, to myself or Marissa. Come over, come over and say hey to us and watch the video so you can see us like, if when we're dancing and making faces on the screen. <laughs> but um, if you want the show notes, those should be those links should be in there. If you don't, if we talked about something that's not in the notes, let me know and I will find it. 
I will find it because I like taking information and giving it to people just like that. Right, information transfer. <laughs> Although I've, 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 my um, description of who I have become has been a translator. Oh, yeah. Because for years, that's what I've been. I translate from social work to everyone else in the world. I transfer from everything else in the world to the social workers. I transfer to the social workers in public health, I, uh, American Indian people, and everyone else in the world. I'm, I translate all the time. So I take information in, and then I translate it back out into the other language. Yeah. Um, and I think information transfer, being an educator, is um, a very natural very natural extension of that, you know? Oh yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. Cause yeah. And, and that's, and that's one of the things I think you and I love to do, right? We love to, we love to educate. We love to help people. I believe knowledge is power mm -hmm. and I believe, you know, understanding this information age and having the knowledge in order to do the things that you need to do in this information age is what helps people accomplish their goals. Without that, you know, you're, you're kind of stuck. You know, I was, um, talking with somebody the other day and they were a digital immigrant and, um, not at all used to, that's an, I haven't heard that one. I love that word. Yeah. That's, that's what they're <laughs> called. Digital immigrants, not at all used to utilizing the technology. Uh -huh. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder if I'm ever going to be, you know, one of those digital immigrants because there is I'm on every platform religiously the minute that they become available. <laughs> I'm one of the first people in line to get on that platform and mm -hmm. figure out whether or not it's useful to me. There is one platform I simply cannot stand and I don't really know what it is, but I don't like it and it's Snapchat. And everybody loves Snapchat. I am there Snapchat that drives me crazy. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, is, is that my first step into becoming that immigrant, um, you know, 40 years from now when all these young uh, up-and-comers are, are utilizing all this technology? Um, it, it, has Marisa found her stop where she's just... Mm, you know, I don't like, think so. I think, I think actually we are... Um, I don't think people who are... Um, who are the first res first first responders in in first ones in any digital world? I don't think we're ever going to be digital immigrants, and here's why. You might try a platform and not like it, or it doesn't fit or tool, and it doesn't fit for what you want. But right. conceptually, that tool repackaged and in a different way, you might love. Case in true. point, totally what we're going to face off right? about. Case yeah. in point. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I've tried like, well, I've tried lots of different, um, visual, uh, graphics programs. I've tried lot. I, I've tried uh, Adobe Photoshop. I, it's okay. I know it's one of the strongest programs in the world for graphics. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. And if that's all you're doing, that's good. And, and even for somebody who's not just, that's not all they're doing, but, then I tried, I tried Canva and I didn't like it. I tried it again later and now I'm not without it. Yeah. So when I did your Canva challenge and then it was like I, the light bulb went on, I, it was partly how you packaged it. Mm -hmm. It was partly, um, and how you taught it. It was your teaching that helped that. Mm -hmm. It was also though, I think it may have morphed and changed. Yeah. So maybe Snapchat 2020 is going to be different for you and I, and we won't be immigrants. We're actually just going to be revisiting the country. Right. And we tried the food the first time and we didn't really like it. And the second time we're going, oh, well, wait a minute, this could grow on me. Right. Because I think it's the nature, we're, the nature of us to be on, we're still going to try those new things no matter what it is. It could yeah. be, we can be in our 90s and trying what the new kids are trying. We're going to be trying them then because we tried them when it was DOS. Exactly. And, and for <laughs> people who like for when they say, Oh, well, you're, you just, you've had computers all your life, but people my age who were the, I'm the same age. Yep. They didn't have a Commodore 64 when they were in fourth grade. Right. They weren't in a computer program in fourth in, in the seventies, late seventies and early eighties. You didn't, you weren't in a computer class. Nope. <laughs> there weren't computer classes unless you were in the gifted programs and whatevers. You weren't right. in it. Yeah. And and you didn't 
you know, you video games maybe were out, Atari was out, whatever, but we, it's just those of us who are drawn to that. Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't think we're, we're never going to be the immigrants. Yeah. We yeah. may not be the ones, we may not use those tools as religiously, but we're always going to, there's going to be a set of tools and we're going to pick two or three or four that we use a lot, but we're going to try, we're going to try every single one of them. Yep. And that's the first thing I do is I, is I try a new technology and I try to figure out, okay, how would my clients be able to use this? Mm -hmm. And so, and, and as you were talking, you brought up kind of two thoughts, right? Two two thought processes in my mind. The first one is the best tool for you is the one that you're actually going to use. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what the technology is. It doesn't matter what the tool is. One carpenter is going to pick up a hammer and get the nail in, and another carpenter is going to pick up a hammer gun or a screw gun and get the nail into the wood, yep. right? It doesn't matter what tool you use. You will choose the one that that works for you that you like, and you will run with that tool. And you also, one danger I know we run into probably, other people may not run into this, um, although I think it's where their frustration point is, is we will try all 16 tools, and we'll try using all of them, Right. And we sometimes get our plate a little too full of tools. <laughs> um, Just a and, little. And we have to remember to go, okay, hang on, goose, pair back down and use what's working. Don't use, as yeah, as Vicki Fitch would tell me, <laughs> C- cage the absolutely. squirrels. She would tell me, she calls those extra tools squirrels. My problem is, is I'm the tool girl. I have to be playing with the squirrels. Right, so, but then right. I have to remember to cage them once in a while. But I think right. that's also the frustration point of a lot of our potential clients yes. and our clients is that there are so many tools. It's like, I don't know where to start oh, or, right. or, or right. I looked at this one and it didn't work. So none of them are going to work for me. Right. And there are so many variables that come into which one you're going to use. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, do you have the budget for that tool? For instance, I've got a client who um, is wholeheartedly into, you know, there are several layers of the different products you can use to manage your business. Mm-hmm. Um, Entreport and Infusionsoft being kind of the big guns and click funnels, the big guns in the, in the field. And then you drop down to ConvertKit and then you drop down to maybe MailChimp. And we were talking a little bit about, you know, some of the new features in MailChimp. But but you've got to consider budget. You've got to mm-hmm. determine whether or not this is something that you can and do. you can't just you've say got... you have to buy this tool because it's going to work. You can't exactly. just. And you've I... got to consider whether or not the person is tech savvy enough to use that product. Mm-hmm. Because you may have a product that has all the bells and whistles. But I guarantee you, if you are not using all those bells and whistles, it's that product it. is not for you. You're mm-hmm. paying way more money than you're getting value out of that product. Does that make sense? Oh, and yeah. Then, and then understanding how these tools are going to integrate nicely. You know, when you design an online course, for instance, you can design that online course as a bare bones email or Facebook group course all the way up into something like the new Kajabi, right? Yep. Where you have all those bells and whistles and all those all those systems in place to be able to run this as, you know, I don't know, an amazing online course. All of those different levels of courses will accomplish the goal. Yep. Your audience will learn what they're trying to learn, and they will get done whatever it is they're trying to get done. And and so just by understanding kind of where that person is and what platforms are going to work well for them, that helps them to set up these systems and and put these systems together in such a way that they can proactively run their business instead of reactively run their business. We also were talking a little bit about – the best tool for you is the one that you're actually going to use. Well, that leads me into, you know, kind of one of the comments that you made earlier, I think it was in the pre-show before we were even online, is you said, you know, following along with me and my groups is very interesting because I'm always posting things that, you know, that are super geeky and, 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 you know, new information and, and, and out there. And one of the things that I wanted to, articulate to you as to why that happens for me is because I wholeheartedly believe my ideal clients or my tribe, my members of people who follow me, they're the me from yesteryear, right? They're the me who was trying to figure this thing out. Marty McFly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. 
who was struggling to kind of mm-hmm. get things up and running for myself. And, and, and now I have graduated into where I am today, but I started with a Twitter stream, which I still run today. The same one. Twitter- the same one mm-hmm. with a Twitter stream that was all set up for me. I used social media very differently than everybody else out here. So when I engage my clients and start talking with my clients about how to use it, my end goal, my end game is the consumer, the end user, because that's how I started in, in the social world. I would fill my Twitter stream with stuff I wanted to look at later. Now you uh-huh. got to understand I was a single mom working a full-time job, putting myself through school. How much time do you think I had to go explore? <laughs> um, uh, no. That much? You know? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't even have no. that, really. You were avoiding I, homework. I <laughs> followed Twitter accounts that would give me recipes for dinner in 140 characters or less. Not even kidding. Nice. Go up at the grocery store and scroll through that stream and say, oh, this is what I'm having. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Dinner was finished. And guess who did not have to spend her time planning it, right? Because I didn't have it. It's too bad you couldn't order dinner through Twitter at the, order the stuff at the. I know, right? (laughs) But but the reality was, is I used it for very personal reasons. Uh And I still do a lot of that today. The things that you see come across in the in in all the streams that I run are things that I'm interested in and I know my audience is interested in them because my ideal client is the me from yesteryear yeah so I know those people are interested in what I'm delivering and what I'm offering and so again every we're all very egocentric it's not uh-huh. it's not really PC to say that in our world today but the reality is is we're all here for a reason right one of the ways in which I accomplish my goals is to stay on top of what's happening through what I'm posting in the social channels. I'm already searching. I'm already researching. Now I'm going to share the things that I find impactful or exciting or useful or new or whatever, you know, and, and the other side of that coin is, is, you know, the knowledge of kind of where my clients are because I'm continuing to evolve. So are they right. So as I'm providing this stream of information, you know, I was looking on Time Hop the other day and I, I, <laughs> I was in Twitter jail for the first time. I think this was like 2012. And if you look at that Twitter account, I probably got, oh my gosh, it's, it's into double digits as far as thousands of tweets that I've yeah. sent because I do a lot of you know, tweeting during events, you know, you know that I'm, that I'm at an event because I'm on Twitter and I'm very active right. on Twitter. When there's ha- the same hashtag 50 times, you know that. Exactly. Well, for me, I would post hundreds and hundreds of things that I was sharing and Twitter finally said, mm, you're in jail. And uh, <laughs> I saw your post about that time hop the other day and had to giggle because one, I just recently went visited Facebook jail for a stupid mistake. And we won't talk about that right now. Um, yeah, well, anyway, but I really like what really impresses me about you bringing that up that way is there are people out there who would tell you don't share everything. You know, there's two rules about things. Don't share everything, you know, and rule number two. Go on. That's the point. (laughs) Number two is there's nothing in that blank because you don't want to share everything you know. Yeah. So there's this school of thought of by sharing everything you know, you're letting all the secrets out. Right. But really, 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 the secret sauce is that that rule is invalid. Yes. Because it's by share. It's, it's, it's kind of like, um, in one of the other groups I'm in, they were talking the other day about, um, group karma about karma in groups in Facebook groups of, you know, whether you go in and just spill your stuff or whether you, um, go in with value as a group right. member. Right. And, and I think even, and, and, and that's something that just as entrepreneurs and, and as women in general, even we do a lot of, you know, it's, it's, there's the group of women who share with each other because we're sharing 
Um, and because we learn from that sharing and we, by me sharing with you, I learned something else late, you know, it, we don't keep track. Yeah. You know, I, but then there's also groups of people and that include women. I'm not going to say that there aren't who they don't share everything. They're not going to share their secret sauce with you because they're worried you're going to steal it. Right. And, and, he, and here's my philosophy about that. I'm actually mm -hmm. glad you brought that up. That's that thought that, that, um, you know, area of thought or whatever you want to call it actually came from the world of academia. Mm -hmm. You know, the professor stood in front of the room and, you know, and, and gave you their knowledge and information in the form of a lecture or whatever they were doing. Right? And it's their academic and, property. Yes. And, and, you know, that's, that's been, that's a centuries old philosophy, yes. right? About, you the know, master. Don't, share, don't share all the knowledge. The reality is, is uh, Google's already sharing all the knowledge. You <laughs> don't have anything that's not already out there. Now, what you do have, is a delivery method. The mm -hmm. way that you put things together and that somebody else receives from you is very different. So the two of mm -hmm. us, for instance, we're both, oh, very yeah. techie. we're both very techy. We both love what we do. I guarantee you our audiences are two totally different groups because mm -hmm. the group of people I build a rapport with is going to be very different than the group of people you build a rapport with. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe any one of us, can take on the entire world and educate the entire world. It's not going to happen. Oh, God, no. Right? We've got to team up so, to do it. <laughs> there are a lot of trains of thought out here that say, give away your best stuff because it shows people what you know, and they know that you're going to be able to help them solve their problem. Mm -hmm. And that's my philosophy. I give away my best stuff. I'm constantly creating and constantly putting it out there because – I want you to know that when you come to me with a problem or a question or you need help with something, I got your back. My mm -hmm. tagline is, you got this. I can yep. help. Right? And that's the way I view it. And so for and, – and the gurus that I follow who are – their businesses are in, you know, the, the ten millions of dollars, <laughs> you know, each year. Right? I can't even imagine do. that amount of money. Just they, <laughs> their best stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got, I went to, um, <clears throat> recently went to Callan Rush and Justin Livingston's Maximize Your Audience Live. I don't know if you've heard of them. They are amazing. I have. I have. Justin Livingston is the one that put butts in seats for people like Tony Robbins. Okay. Super guru with internet marketing. I mean, knows his stuff up one side and down the other. And the very first thing they told us when we got there, one of the first things was, Take this back and share it. <laughs> and that everything, is everything you're learning right here that you spent a thousand dollars a ticket to be here to learn. Take it with you and share it. And it has be, it has it has been ingrained into some of my lead generation classes that I teach because it's such powerful stuff. So give away your best stuff. Don't be afraid to. Because nobody is going to get it in that little snippet of time. you got to understand the human brain doesn't see something immediate unless you read from. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and remember it, you know, the minute you absolutely have to go through the process. Yeah. You can't, nobody gets a get out of life free card. You and it's going to change. Things are going to change and morph. Right. So just because I tell you, hey, here's a great tool for you. And here's how you can use it in a meeting that the two of us are having does not mean that you're good now and you can handle this. You're still going to need to go download my ebook or my online course or come to a seminar uh -huh. where I'm walking you through how to do it. Now, is 100% of your audience going to be there? No, absolutely yeah. not. But a good 20 to 30% of them will be. And that's what you're looking for anyway. Well, and, and not to mention, somebody may not be in a position, and I'm not talking financially, they may not be in their where they're at in their journey, right? To do that at the time, right? I'm gonna go. I'm going right back to Canva. Yeah. I looked at it. It wasn't what I needed at the time. At the time, yeah. And 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 I knew what I was wanting to do at the time too, right. you know. And I've actually looked at other graphics tools since then mm -hmm. because I had to look at all of them. Right. Of course. You've got yeah. to look at all the tools. You got to play with all the tools. That, that's right. You got to and, try everything. You and even that. and I've even invested in one financially. 
because in order to really see what it did, I had to do that. Right. I'd give that money back right now. Yeah. I'd give it back yeah. or I'd ask for it back because yeah, I could really use it this week. <laughs> yeah, you know, know right? so, so, you know, but, but what it is, 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 you know, you have tools that work and then, and then the tools change. I mean, change. or you change. Yeah. The tool changes or you change. Something what? is going to change because that's the way our world works. Inevitable. People, we change. So that is the one thing that's going to happen in life is it is going, things are going to change. Right. That is actually my doorbell. Let me see if I have to go visit. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. I am so, this is, I love the way, like, we've been able to bounce it's stuff off I each other. Go visit it. Nobody's there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Tech doorbells? Let me check. Let me check my camera on my, on my front door. Cause I have an app that has my front door on it. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I wasn't joking. I actually have one as well. Um, <laughs> That's the sad part. I've got the front door, the back door. Yeah. Um, Arlo cameras. And no, I don't make any money off that statement. Um, yeah. I, I actually use Ring, and it's really cool because I can talk to the person. Yeah. Oh, so I've looked at the Ring. Yeah, if I had cool. the money back from that graphics program, I could go buy a Ring right now. There you go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to spend my next, my next week. I'm work. I'm actually working on some systems myself is that's what I'm doing is putting in some foundational learning and putting this laying out systems so that I can, um, be a part of this awesome summit that you're going to have is going to be part of it. Um, I've got to create some content for that. Am I right? No. I got, I got homework. <laughs> Girls got me, she got me homework. I got you homework. So here's what I'm suggesting. You can, you can put together a PowerPoint or you don't have to. It, it is really. I'm an academician. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm going to put together a presentation. But, but it's also really nice to just have a conversation about whatever the topic yeah. is. So, so do it either way. And then also have a, uh, you know, a freebie or something that people can opt into. Again, building your email list, right? And that way she's got no homework matter. and she's coaching me right in the middle of, right in the middle of the show, That's right? The, so she's okay. giving me, you guys, she's giving me stuff in the middle of the show. I didn't pay her for this. She's giving it to me. And then we're in the show it brings me, uh, brings me back again. Watch the video, come over and check out Marissa's links because you are going to find value in that Facebook group that you find in the, in the, down there under those, the links under this video, lounge, yeah. the Facebook group that, that she has of the systems lounge, the seven day chat Canva challenge. Oh yeah. You want to do that. One. You want to do that. Update it. Canva has changed quite a bit and I need to add a Canva for work section because I don't have that in there as well. So, so I'm giving her homework now is now she just got homework. <laughs> So there yes. you go. But it is it is still a really, really good course. It walks you through exactly what you need to know how to do inside Canva. And it gives you practical reasons to use it and, and what and you can do with it. Practical so things you can come out of the challenge. Because yes. you're not just creating something in a class because you took Marissa's seven-day challenge class. You're creating nope. things that are going to work for your business at that time. Yes. So that when you come out, you're not just spending your time taking a class. You yes. are working on things you need. Yes. And in the Canva challenge, you leave with 30 days worth of content mm -hmm. ready to post. In the online course, you leave with six months worth of content ready to post. So I really set you up and help you to batch work so that it gets done and you're ready to go. So for those of you who maybe are launching a product or service very soon, mm -hmm. the Canva challenge would be a great opportunity for you because it teaches you exactly how to put all those pieces yep. together. And even though I'm saying create this social media post, you can be creating an ad for whatever it is you're launching. Does that make sense? Right. You don't have to, you don't have to like be doing that particular task. You can actually do a different shape, something, and you can create it for what you're doing. So you exactly. apply and that's a good, um, it kind of reminds me of, um, in Vicki, uh, Fitch, who was my first show. Right. Um, and I'll put that link in the, uh, I'll put our past show. I've actually got past shows now. 
<laughs> Yay! This is number five. So I'll put in the past show links that we've talked about today in the show notes because in the first show, Vicki talked about her rock star guide to getting it done. Right. And one of the big things in the Rockstar Guide to Getting It Done has to do with layer group with layering tasks. Yeah. And so you're you're in in the seven day challenge. You're learning. You're working on something you need right now for your business anyway, yeah. and you are creating a library of things you can repurpose again later. So right. you're getting three things done at the same time frame you're doing one. Because if you spend 15 minutes doing something in your business, no matter what it is, and this goes back to me being very pragmatic in, in my time, um, and I've had to learn by the really hard way over the years to put boundaries around it. Because I'm yeah. the person that if you call me at 3 in the morning and you need something and you're my bestie, I'm getting my butt out of bed and doing whatever you need. I'm just right. doing it. And I would do it and do it and do it until I got sick. Yeah, and you have to put boundaries around that in some ways. Now, maybe not for your bestie because they can still get you at three in the morning, but not everyone you're doing. And you put systems in place and put boundaries around it. So you put the boundaries around what you're doing, and so that 15 minutes becomes even more valuable. Mm -hmm. And if you can do three things in the 15 minutes, and it's not multitasking. Let me be very clear. It right. is not multitasking. You want to zone in and focus on that Canva task. Exactly. But you want it to come out with three different kinds of outcomes. Right. Three different right. things. And I'm seeing mm -hmm. a logic model in my head. My God, I am yeah. an academician. Yeah. <laughs> and I do that a lot, right? I mean, you know, um, my, you know, a lot of the educational courses that I took when I was in school had to do with adult learning theory and, mm -hmm. and, you know, how adults learn things and pick up things very differently than say a child would, you know, if you're trying to teach a child how to do something, it absolutely has to apply to their life. So all my online courses, that's how I work them. You know, mm -hmm. the Asana course, I actually added brain breaks because there's so much content to that course. You need a break every now and then. <laughs> and so it's funny because then we're making our student, our, you know, we're creating classes and, and maybe that's a good thing for people when they're creating classes is to remember. Yes. Um, and maybe even work with somebody who knows, if you don't know anything about adult learners and you don't know anything about teaching, you can still create a course and teach, but it might not be a bad idea to have a mentorship session or a coaching session or something with someone who does know those things to be able to apply that layer. Exactly. It's kind of like putting icing or sprinkles on top of your stuff because it's going to kick it up a notch. I'll guarantee you. Right. Um, and only so many of your students are going to complete your course, but what if you can impact that number? Yep. Right? It's a bell curve like every other bell it's curve. Gonna, it's going right? to impact your month, your bottom line of who's going to complete and who's yeah. going to come back for the next one. And it will. who's going to give you a testimonial, which is going to then impact, you know, who buys your course the next time around. I mean, there are so many different factors that are that are associated with that. And so there's always that bell curve. But if you can impact that a little bit or a lot based on how you design your course and the layout of your course. I've gone into online courses where I'm, I'm pretty OCD about things. Like I'm very neat. Everything has to stay clean around me or I can't function. Mm. And when I step into an online course and it's like, wow, somebody <laughs> just kind of, you know, <laughs> I, for lack of it's a better term, barf. <laughs> yeah, on, on the entire page, I can't, I can't function in there. Yeah, Everything it's too much. Clean lines, white space, plenty of room for me to move around. For my brain to focus on what you, the one thing you want me to do, not 50 things. Please don't ever create an online course and have 50 things in that course. Please go with one concept. <laughs> or at least one concept per lesson. Right. Or one concept, right. but one task per lesson. But that all apply to the same thing. Right. right. If you're teaching me how to use Canva, teach me how to use Canva. Don't go off on a tangent and teach me how to develop an online course, you know? <laughs> Stay on task, right? Oh. <laughs> and, and so those are some of those components that are just very practical ways yep. in which you can apply adult learning theory to the um, the products and services that you're selling. Which which it, it, it reminds me of a funny is, is because the two tools that we're going to tell you guys about in our future, um, it, you know, when we do the Back to the Future and you see us here in however many months, um <laughs> The one tool that the tool you choo chose is very 
that way. The one I chose, yeah. you can see, and I chose it because I want to be able to see the 30,000 foot view of yeah. everything. I want to see all the little people on the ground, but then I want to yeah. be able to zoom all the way down and see not only the one person on the ground, but what clothes do they have on? What are they listening to? Um, yeah. what, uh, what's their history? What's their everything? And I want to be able to see, I want my cake and eat it too. And so yeah. my, I say, I say that my tool is my cake and eat it too. And yours is, she's got some foot killer focus. <laughs> I don't know what, he, without giving away what we're talking about then is what would you say um, I totally about my that. tool? It's hilarious, <laughs> it's hilarious that you say that because I was thinking about that the other day because my tool has introduced something very similar to what your tool does. And I created a video for um, this, this um, blogging group the other day. They wanted, you know, an, a, a um, tutorial on how to use my tool. And <laughs> as I'm describing we're, this is this is going to be easy for people to figure this out. But anyway, oh, we're just still as, not going to tell them. As as I'm just Lindsay, no, no, yeah, you said sprinkles that is similar to what your tool does. I'm I'm telling them how to use it and everything. And then when I go over to the way that I use my tool, I said this is actually my favorite way to use it. <laughs> and I was laughing because we use our tools differently. Yeah. <laughs> Very differently. It goes back to what we said at the beginning of the show, right? The tool that you that. The most important tool for you to use is the one that you actually will that use. you will use consistently over time. Consistently. So don't think you have to be on every platform everywhere. Think which one can I? I mean, I usually start people if I'm doing a social media training on Instagram because you get a three for out of every Instagram post. Mm -hmm. It will automatically post not only to Instagram but to your Facebook page and to your Twitter account. Yep. And then if you use if this then that, then you can even blow you know, it up. It, yeah, blow it up. So start with a tool that is easy and fits into your lifestyle. And then move forward. And sometimes that means that you've got to visit a couple of different tools to figure out which one's going to work for yeah. you. And that's why turning to somebody like myself or Stacy, who have used a lot of those tools, and we can listen to what we're hearing you say about your lifestyle, about the way mm -hmm. you run your business, about all those different variables that come into play when you're trying to choose a tool. And we can help guide you to one or two tools that you really want to be looking at we can take the 30,000 yeah we can yeah. take that 30,000 foot of all the apps in the app store right and pare it down to what tools we Are think might be yeah. the ones that you want to try but also if you've tried so many things before don't get frustrated and just say I'm never going to use technology because it still can be something helpful to you and right. and I think then from our perspectives I think the good thing you brought up was the just we're back to looking at the literacy of anything you do okay. and and i'm being i'm i i just saw it like i squirreled for a minute because i'm looking over at the, the comments and the comment says did someone say sprinkles mm. so <laughs> thank you Lindsay. i know that's you i appreciate it. she's really good at picking up the little the little nuggets in when there's a show she like picks up the little fun stuff so i think today's one of today's hashtags that i'm gonna have to add is did someone say sprinkles? Yeah. Um, and 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 another may uh, we maybe the tw uh, twin tech face off or whatever we uh, choose to talk yeah, about. We'll, we'll come up with something cool about our maybe. about our tools. Yeah. And yeah. and man, here we've covered so many things. I know. So <laughs> to see if we can do this, I'm going to see if we can do this. How do how do we pare it down? What are the main what are the main three things you want people to take away about you today? About whatever. That I'm your powerhouse systems hacker. That's what I do. Um, you got this. I can help. And get your systems in place. You will be so much more comfortable in your own skin, in your role as the CEO of your company, if you've got your systems down. I know it's a little bit of work to set them up in the beginning. I get that. But the minute that they're done and they're up and running and the, the automation components are working and everything is running smooth and you've got, you know, exactly how things are supposed to be done inside your business from your customer journey to, you know, to, um, to whatever it is you're accomplishing. Once you get those systems in place, uh -huh. you will exhale. Yep. You will exhale and, and things will run and 
you can also layer systems. I'll, I'll say that, that you can um, set your foundational systems and then maybe a system, a system's almost like a tool is it's going to, you're going to have something come on later that you're going to add a system to what you're doing. And, yeah. and your foundation, it's kind of like adding on a house. So you build the system, build the house, the foundation, then you build this gorgeous house and then you decorate it. And all of a sudden you decide there's, you know, something comes out and you want to put in a room that has a hot tub in it. Well, you right. add on a room and you add you, so you add on more foundation, you add on more, you, you build the house around it, you put the hot tub and you, and you decorate it out. And then, and then you find out, you know, you want to move to a different house. So you build more found you take everything you've got with you and and it's just it the con, the journey continues that's right the journey right. continues and and that doesn't mean that you so nothing means you have to have the whole house and everything built at the beginning you also you're going to the journey is the destination the it's, journey is the destination absolutely you, and don't be afraid to change a piece of technology i guess that's exactly a don't, don't be afraid to change. If you start using something and you recognize that this tool is not working for you, stop using it. Why stress yourself out? Mm -hmm. There's plenty of stress in our world. If you're looking for some extra stress, I can hand you some in a split Oh, second. yeah. Yeah, I've got a little. Donald instead, Brandt from Blab is checked in. Turn to something Sorry. that is going to work for you, you know? Snapchat's not my favorite tool. Instagram does absolutely mm -hmm. everything Snapchat does, and I love that tool. So... Find something that works for you and run with that ball instead. Yep. Even if it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. If it has the right. bells and whistles you want, use that tool. And I, I just, Donald Brandt from Blab, our Blab brother, just checking in with us. I really, I'm excited when my, the Blab siblings start coming to the show. This is yep. the first time I, I, you know, I have, I did, wouldn't, didn't see myself doing a podcast a year ago. I really, I watched yours. I watched uh -huh. Vicky's. I watched, um, you know, a variety of people on Blab. I watched Don, Don Brandt's. I watched a bunch of people's shows. And I didn't see myself necessarily doing a show like this at all. Yeah. It, things changed through the year and it happened. And then at about eight, two months ago or about three months ago, somebody put the idea in my head and I thought, hmm. And I did not imagine how much fun I was going to be having just sitting on a video, chatting with somebody for an hour or so each week yeah. and planning it and putting graphics together, you know. So, and you have totally been a part of that journey. That's why this is called like the Inspired by the Best interview series to start out my podcast. And I picked certain people. When I started the, I, when I started thinking about this podcast, there were certain people that were on the A list. <laughs> of who was going to be called first and asked on the show and why. And you were, Vicki was on there. You were on there. Um, next week, we've got Tanika Mason um, on there. And I did a, a beta class. I took a beta class of hers a year ago in kind of my journey and have followed her since. And so she's going to come on and join us next week about things. Ooh. And uh, there's some other people coming up that I've been following. If you got something out of this week, if you're watching and listening, put something in the comments that you enjoyed of today, put something in the comments. If you're struggling, if you're, if you're struggling with something, if you've got a challenge, yep. give us the tech girl challenge. We will find the app for you Yes, because we, we got, you got this and we can help you figure it out <laughs> to, to paraphrase. Um, you know, she's, she's got, She's got you. She got your back. Um, thank you so much for coming and um, being, not just for being here today. Mm -mm. It's more for being um, a cheerleader in a group that we're both in, for being there on Blab and, and having, I like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm finding people who are like me. You know, that was the first thought. And then taking the Canva challenge and following in the groups, we both, you know, and then I joined and followed your group with all the nuggets. But more than that, when I've posted in some of the groups we're in and I see not only just a like or a heart come up, you don't just post a like or a heart. You post something back or cheer, you cheer somebody on or you ask a question that's engaging and helpful. You don't just, oh, go and like stuff. And that, 
again, thinking, figuring I was a, a newbie and a baby to the entrepreneurial scene, having other people who I admire come and say, you know, it's, it's very validating that we're in. So your love of empowering women, yeah. you don't just love it, you do it. Every single day. With every action you have, including that smile right there. And uh-huh. I really appreciate, I really appreciate seeing, um, you know, because there's some people would, would look and go, oh, this person's like me and they're doing stuff that's all like mine. And oh my God, they're, they're competition. And I don't, I, I, I don't, uh, uh-uh. I'm going, oh my God, you know, I reach out and she's like, come on, let's go sister girl. Let's go on this journey. And, you know, then we get to talking about projects. So I really appreciate all of that about you and for you. And I, I so much look forward to the business virtual summit, the systems, yeah. the, the actual title is business, business systems, systems virtual, virtual summit, summit 2017. 2017. And <laughs> You guys need to watch for that. Um, yes, so definitely. the links nope. in the, the links, <laughs> yeah, follow, follow, um, the followers on, on Twitter, on Facebook. We've got her community group, um, the Canvas seven day challenge. We didn't even get to talk about Fem City Dallas. I I'll have to talk about, you and I have to talk about this because, because of that, finding that link, I found out there's one in Kansas City and I joined their community. I have no idea what they're going to be doing. I didn't need to join something else, but I did it because this woman over here has good stuff and I like followed her lead. Pinterest, oh my God, there's gold over in Pinterest. YouTube, there's apparently some little witty videos coming up on YouTube, even more recent. Instagram, um, and then my name is Stacy Brayuka. You can find me at, at Stacy Brayuka all over social media. And those links are down there too. This has been my fifth, the fifth episode of Creative Connections, bringing geeks and creatives together all in one planet, one teeny tiny podcast at a time. And we want to thank you for watching and listening on your favorite, favorite podcast website. Um, come by and check out our previous webisode, webisodes on our website. <laughs> Our webisodes, uh, creativeconnections.com slash blog. You can find them there, um, as well as looking for some good freebies I've got coming. I've got some stuff coming out I'll be talking about next week um, because there's you're going to be, there's a new freebie. It'll be out before next week, but so if you follow me, you might see it before then, but if not, you'll hear about it next week. And I appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate Jessica Powell, David Brant, and Lindsay Badger who are in the chat right now. And we will see you next week. Thank you so much, sister girl. Thank you. Bye everyone. Have a fabulous rest of your week. Thank you for participating in our podcast today. You can find Stacy at Stacy Bayuka on any social media channels. Support us with your purchases in our tech shop, CRE number 8, TIV Connections.tech. Music courtesy of Enneagram Records, Scotty McBee, Upper Deck Studios, and Scott McBee. We appreciate their creativity, originality, and sponsorship of the show. Find the intro song, Brooklyn and 59, and iTunes using the link in our show notes below. Our podcast website is CRE number 8, TIV Connections.com. Thank you from Creative Connections, bringing creatives and geeks together all over the planet, one tiny podcast at a time. If you are listening on your favorite podcast website, come by and check out our previous episodes on our websites. See you next week at 2 p.m. Central for the next Creative Connections. Yeah.